Kim Porter is Diddy's ex-girlfriend and the mother of four of his kids. On those drives, the witness says eight videos featured eight celebrities at Diddy Freakoffs or parties, and that six were males, two were females. Even Snoop, you understand? And a lot of more people, their career went up when they sat on this man's lap. That's the director. You understand? Oh, man. And that's why a lot of them sold their soul to be on the director's chair. Everything he said was true. You know, it's the same book. The book changed because it had Kim Porter face on it. I'd like to apologize to the family of Kim Porter for putting her face. Let her rest in peace. This is for not to bring down Kim Porter. It's just to fulfill her dream that she wanted her, her story out. Hello and welcome to Beauty by Jen. If you have or if you haven't been here, welcome either way. <laughs> Welcome back. So if you guys aren't all aware, a guy by the name of Courtney Burgs or Burgess, if I pronounce that incorrectly, has come forward alleging that the Kim Porter's tell all, Kim's lost words, that was pulled from Amazon wasn't the original book. You know, I told him I ain't want to be the face of it and let him be the face. And he t everything he said was true. You know, it's the same book, the book changed because it had Kim Porter face on it. I'd like to apologize to the family of Kim Porter for putting her face, let her rest in peace. This is for not to bring down Kim Porter, it's just to fulfill mm -hmm. her dream that she wanted her, her story out. You know what I'm saying? So, so the original book that was on Amazon that had her face on there, that's not the that's not the, the original book, correct? It's the PG book. The PG? Oh. It's the okay. PG. This one got the director chair. I call him the director. Mm -hmm. I call Diddy the director. Also claims to have numerous Diddy freak off tapes because according to him, he was there from the very beginning of everything in regards to Diddy. He allegedly has the inside information everyone has been looking for. Let's talk a little bit about um, these tapes. Now, a lot of people are wanting to know what's on these tapes, uh, what celebrities are on these tapes, you know, and, um, I believe this is these are the tapes that uh, the feds actually came and got from his mansion, correct? Is this like yeah. copies of those tapes? Um, well, these is not those because at the Diddy, what happened was Cassie got whipped down. Everybody seen that, right? Mm -hmm. Cassie told Beyonce and some other girl, young ladies, that what he did. Um, Beyonce told Jay, "Why you ain't confront him?" So she wanted to get away. She she didn't get away because she didn't want to go Beyonce because she know Diddy would have found her. So Kim took her and gave her all this stuff to be on it. Kim got tired. You understand? Know she was tired from the nose um broke. She was tired from him sleeping with her best friend having me. She was tired from him having Cassie in the house, living there and sneaking downstairs sleeping. She got tired of doing threesomes or foursomes. You understand? Know she got she got tired. Then her boyfriend got killed um, from Death Jam. Um, they found him dead in his bathroom. She was tired. You know what I'm and she told uh, them that she's on to a book. The original book is actually called Kim Porter Tell It All with an alias of a person named Jamal Millward. So just so that everyone is following, the actual writer of the book is Courtney Burgess. I'm assuming. An interview recently came out that he did on the Lionel B show. The channel will be linked in the description box of him going over his involvement with Sean Combs and how Sean Combs is a very evil, sick individual. One thing Diddy is, I call Diddy Lucifer. If you know anything about um, religion, who Lucifer was, Lucifer was one of the who was in charge of music in heaven, mm -hmm. but he was corrupt. So God um, took away his body and put him out of heaven. So that's what um, did he do? He take kids' bodies, he take men bodies, he take female bodies, because he wanted he wanted to do that voodoo. He wanted to do the, he wanted to be the, the gatekeeper, and he learned that from J Lo. You know what I'm saying J Lo. Oh wow! So J Lo J Lo taught him voodoo. 
she didn't teach it, but she introduced it to me. Oh, okay. You understand? Every religion got some type of mystery thing. Some people put horseshoes over it. Some people put salt down. Some people um, um, use the Bible put in their house or holy water. You understand? All of this is so hard to follow, right? First, no one was talking. Everyone was quiet as a mouse. Now, all of a sudden, everyone was there to witness Diddy's evil. Is everyone trying to make themselves look innocent for not speaking out? Or do they want to look like heroes? Or do they just want to pay out? Because they went from beyond their limits, doing who knows what and the guilt of it all for whatever reason. And I hope that this would bring some solace to the actual victims. So even with Usher and even um, Justin Bieber, even if they come out and say, I was a victim, it was kids. It was kids, they didn't know, they wanted their career back and they was fooled, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's best for them to come out and say, look, I was a victim. Don't wait till they tell them or find them on the tape and say, yo, he was one of the such and such. He was a victim. Do you feel like that's kind of why, why they're cho choosing in the, to be mute right now about yeah. the whole thing? Yeah, wanna... but when you get 20, 19, all that, you ain't a victim no more. You're selling your soul. But when you're 15 right. to 16, you don't know. You, you're trying to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, Courtney recently did an interview on the Lionel B Show. And let's just note that in the 56 minute video, he had a lot to say. He talked about everything from how he first met Sean Combs, his many encounters with the law enforcement, his possession of the celebrity freak off tapes, Gene Deal, Biggie, Tupac, Wendy Williams, Snoop Dogs, you name it. Even Snoop. You understand? And a lot of more people, their career went up when they sat on this man's lap as the director. You understand? Oh, man. And that's why a lot of them sold their soul to be on the director chair. Stuff was sent to me because they know anybody in the industry know I'm not scared. I'm not scared of um, Haitian Jack. I'm not scared of Snoop. I'm not scared of Game. And remember, the Kim Porter tell-all book that was, according to him, true but heavily edited. He claims to have all the edited out portions and pictures in the original book. Everything he said was true. You know, it's the same book. The book changed because it had Kim Porter face on it. I like to apologize to the family of Kim Porter for putting her face to her rest in peace. This is for not to bring down Kim Porter, it's just to fulfill mm -hmm. her dream that she wanted her, her story out. You know what I'm saying? Here are a few more excerpts before I sign off. Snoop letting Diddy rub on his hand. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And that's where one of the X's come from. Snoop. Oh, can you hold it up a little bit more? Let me see see how that... Oh, yeah. Dang. So, when you, you talk about you gangster, you this and that, you're not gangster. How did you feel, man, just seeing Snoop take off? I know, was y'all clowning him later on after after that happened? Um, At that time, I already knew he wasn't a stand-up person. Oh. He just was a rapper. Like you got some people rapper, boxer, rapper, entrepreneur. He just was a rapper. After his, he he was a house dog. You know what I'm saying? In the PG version, there's X's. There's a bunch of X's for certain people's names. Like who who was the X's that was taken out of the book? Um, the X's was for uh, Snoop. Oh. Yeah, it was for him about him sleeping with supposed to been in the bed with. Uh, Diddy. Whoa. That's and, crazy. Um, they caught it. You understand? Um, like I said, we call him the director. You, you don't right. sit on his lap or do what Diddy want to do. It's cut. You do what he wants you to do. It's action. I done been confronted by so many law enforcement for the the um, CDs, the, the um, even my studio equipment was um, coming to Oh, so, they, so the feds came and came and got stuff. Yeah, even I got a new phone. I had to get a new phone because they took the phone and did well. They did. I wasn't going to use the same phone, so I just, Ooh. you know, it's not mine to keep. It's this all I needed, and this right here. So Courtney Burks has been telling everyone he has the receipts in the feds 
believed him and they took the flash drives everything he had watch him talk about it on this interview because my next guest just testified before a federal grand jury he says he was in possession of a trove of digital evidence from Diddy's freak-offs and parties. His name is Courtney Burgess, and he says a friend gave him 11 flash drives that belonged to the late Kim Porter. And if you follow this story, you'll know that Kim Porter is Diddy's ex-girlfriend and the mother of four of his kids. On those drives, the witness says eight videos featured eight celebrities at Diddy freak-offs or parties, and that six were males, two were females. The drive also included a manuscript of an alleged Kim Porter memoir, a memoir that her four kids insist is fake. Courtney Burgess told his story on a podcast before he told the grand jury today, and after he told the grand jury, and I mean immediately after, he booked it over to my set, and he and his attorney talked to me. I should tell you that he was very limited and how much detail he could go into uh, about his testimony. And because the eight people in the videos, the eight celebrities in the videos, were allegedly victims of sex crimes, we know who they are, but we will not be naming them, famous or not. Here now is my conversation with Courtney Burgess and Ariel Mitchell, who's his attorney, beginning with the question of whether the participants in the video even knew they were being recorded. Were there any cameras in places where you'd assume privacy, like bathrooms? It, well, I've never been in this house, but the picture, yes, yes. That's where it took place, you, yes. You, you're, awa you're aware of, of uh, surreptitious uh, cameras that were recording well, in private places like bathrooms? I didn't see the cameras. You could tell how it was, the person was angled. Not, I knew that it was a camera there because I was there, you know, I was there. I don't know if the person was too tall, he was holding or whatever, but I wasn't there. May I ask you this, Courtney, and um, Ariel, you can jump in on this as well, but I wanna hear from Courtney first. Your uh, home was raided by federal authorities, and I assume it is because of, of this material. Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say that. They just went to every one of them looking for me. They said, um, the paperwork said the 24th, that I had to be there the 28th, and then it was um, the 27th. I said, I can't make it there, that's tomorrow. So I don't know, it's from the look of it, it was four days. Uh, and I wanna be specific, when, yes, when we talk about yeah. a raid, um, we're talking about when a subpoena is served for documents, a search warrant or an arrest warrant. In this situation, Mr. Uh, Burgess was not in any way, shape or form, uh, had a search warrant or an arrest warrant issued for him. It was just them serving a subpoena. So when the federal government needs to serve a subpoena, they use the marshal service to come to all of your residences if you have more than one residence. So in this situation, they sent marshals to all of Mr. Burgess's residences. And that was somehow construed or understood or turned into a, a raid, but he did not face a raid. It was just to serve him a subpoena. Ariel, do you believe that the uh, subpoenas were issued and executed based on uh, the federal authorities knowledge um, that these flash drives existed and, and had this kind of compromising material? I think it was based on statements that Mr. Burgess made in a prior interview. And those statements include descriptions of what the witness says he saw on those tapes. So I asked him about that, and he answered what he could, given the limitations imposed on him after testifying before the grand jury. Out of those eight videos, eight celebrities, six men and two women, how many of those eight celebrities um, were, were close to being underage or potentially two. underage? Two males. Females. And of those eight celebrities, how many of them were intoxicated um, or under the influence of drugs? Uh, 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 this is going to be all speculation. I just want to preface it by he wouldn't know appear if they to be. were. Right. Sure. Appear to Let be. Let me rephrase right, it. Based on, yes. I understand. Out of the eight celebrities um, who were recorded having intimate relations with Sean Combs, how many of them appeared to be 
either inebriated or intoxicated or into the influence. All process. of them. All of them. Out of those eight, how many appear to be potentially victimized? How many might have been victimizing? I think um, all, to be honest, all. Were, were victims they or victims. were perpetrating? Victims. They were all eight were victimized, yeah, meaning victim. this was happening to them and they were inebriated. Right. Not knowing, I guess, how much proof it was in it, what they was doing. And of those eight, how many seemed to be potentially minors? Two to three, possibly three. Two to three. Also on the flash drives, Courtney, um, was a what looked to be a manuscript written by, I, it appears to be a woman who had taken Kim Porter's private journals and had written a book. Is that accurate? We don't know. I don't, I don't, we don't know. know how, yeah. That's... I don't know how, um, who wrote it, put it together, but it was from her when I spoke to um, her. What you received on the flash drives, was it the completed book or was it notes from Kim Porter that later were made into a book? It was completed. It's only 60, okay. only, the, only about 54 pages. It was sure, and in the beginning it says, Kim made me promise that if something happened to her, I would make sure this book became public to the world. The way Sean moved, I knew that was a promise I would have to fulfill. Kim knew I was a woman of my word, and this book was going to make it to print. So it sounds like it is a woman who wrote um, up the notes from Kim Porter. Does that sound accurate? It's, it's, have you read it? Yes. I haven't even read the book. Do you know who the woman is? No. And, and to be clear, he received it in its complete form. So I think just to make sure we have some clarity here, yeah. the manuscript that Mr. Burgess received was already in its complete form. Um, it's not did, that he ate, uh, edited it or changed anything. Got it. Um, he did give it to someone Makes else sense. who who then edited it, but that's not how he received Are, it. Okay, so Ariel, did, um, did your client, Courtney, receive the book from the woman who seems to have written it, saying, I'm a woman of my word, and this book is going to make it to print. I don't know if he received it from a man or a woman. He can answer that. I received it from a man. I tell you, some, somebody she was dating. Do you know if the notes from the book really were from Kim Porter? It was, yes, because I spoke to her um, probably like six hours before I got it, received it. You spoke so, to Kim Porter? Yes. So Kim Porter. Just saying hi. Or, okay. Just saying hi. Didn't okay, Ariel, go ahead and give me clarity on the timeline. No, um, I'm trying to get uh, him Ariel. to uh, provide clarity of, uh, was there a conversation with no, her? No, I was or talking just... to the person and he said, hold up, this is Courtney B. right here. Let me say something to him. He said, I know him, put me on speaker. Then that's how we end up speaking. And then later, then somebody later. brought some. The, um, uh, somebody else came and brought you the, the manuscript. Right, right, before I left, before I left ATL. To the best of your knowledge, uh, Courtney, do you believe that the manuscript is truly based on Kim Porter's diaries? Because there is a lot of dialogue in there. It is pages and pages of actual dialogue, which. I mean, I can't remember breakfast today, let alone dialogue from 5, 10, 15, and 20 years ago. I guess this is a woman's score. You understand? Maybe, you know, what she's been through. It's, you know, you. I'm not a woman, so I'm just going by how you... I got female friends and relatives. They always come to the house scoring because what went on in a relationship. And you can't... When you're scoring, you can't forget it. Important to stop down here for a moment and note again that Sean Combs is accused. He has not been convicted of any crimes, and so far everything against him is an allegation until it is proven in a court of law and a jury either decides or he um, decides to sign a plea deal uh, to any of these crimes. But at this point in the story, Sean Combs is uh, not guilty of any crimes. He is 
currently under indictment. He is currently being held on, um, on bail. But if you're at all curious about how Courtney Burgess feels about Diddy today, I asked him about that too. And here's what he had to say. Your lawyer just said, the story the tapes tell are the story of Diddy from the last uh, several decades. And I know that you've known Diddy for a very long time. Can you describe what that story is based on what you now know to be true, the last several decades of Diddy's behavior and the reason he's now sitting in lockup? I, I think I've been doing it for 35 years. I think we probably entered the music business at the same time. He entered with um, Uptown, I entered into Big Beat, um, Atlantic. At the time, I guess he was ambitious. He was then from ambitious went to um, doing anything, and then from doing anything to um, didn't care about nobody, who he could beat, and then he ended up turning to Lucifer at today. I look at him, I don't even, I know y'all call him Diddy or Puffy, I call him Lucifer. Before I go, please remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe. This is the new video that I've added to the Beauty by Gen 2.0 video playlist because we need you to help us get to 9K subs. We are working hard to grow the channel and you matter. See you next time. Thank you.